mix. Probably because it's more than just another supercar. It kind of represents a whole new way of life. Not just for the owner, but the company that builds it as well. You see, in the past year, American Motors has thrown itself lock, stock, and differential into the world of racing and performance cars. And they've done surprisingly well. When they first introduced this car at Daytona Speedway, we wondered just how far their company policy would bend in this direction. Well, happily, we can say they've gone all the way. And with this little swinger, plus the javelin, it looks like blue sky for American. In an era when the jet set dominates the highway scene and supercars are the popular mode of transportation for the in crowd, American Motors has pounded out a one-way ticket to Jollyland with the AMX. Undoubtedly, some swingers must have crept into the upper echelon of AMC because until a couple of years ago, the red bricks on Plymouth Road echoed only of economy cars, compacts, and trite little cliches like the only race we want to win is the human race. And now it's socket to me time with two backbone twisters in a row, the Javelin and the AMX. And with them, they brought a tidal wave of enthusiasm to the main office, happiness to the dealers, customers in the showroom, and cars. all eight holes and left the line we had 30 miles an hour in 2.7 seconds we didn't have to coax it off the line that zinger under the hood handled our little 3,000 pound bomb with no trouble at all we nailed 45 and wide ovals were hot. We pushed a pretty good 0 to 60 run in 6.3 seconds. Our best quarter mile run for the day was 14.5 with quite a bit of wheel spin. Now watch this little sweetheart snake through the pylons. Handling is the name of the game for this AMX. Our driver was able to run through the cones at 50 miles an hour and stated that she felt strong and solid all the way. Rebound and recovery, as you can see, were excellent. This 97-inch wheelbase is a full 12 inches shorter than the Javelin. Through the pylons, lateral support was pretty good. The bucket seats were not the soft, loungy type. However, they did give good back support and ample leg room for even the tallest drivers. With no seat in the rear, it gives quite a bit of room for luggage and boxes and things like that. However, you might have a little trouble with your Irish wolfhound. All the gauges were round and would have been much easier to read had they not been recessed so deeply in the foam rubber dash. 
It was for this reason that we had some difficulty reading the tachometer during hard, fast cornering, as well as during the acceleration runs. In these high-performance, go-for-broke supercars, we've often wondered why some manufacturers insist on hiding important gauges, such as the tack. Disc brakes up front with 10-inch drums in the rear. We worked it out on the braking course for about an hour. Pedal fade was at a minimum. From 30 miles an hour, we stopped in 37 feet. Stopping was fast, with very little sway, if any. From 45, it took 55 feet. It's a very comforting feeling to know that the binders are there, especially in high-speed cornering. From 60 miles an hour, we ground out a good straight line stop in 134 feet. Well, the car features other goodies, like a flow-through ventilation system, air conditioning, tilt steering wheel, rear bumper guards, engine block heater, heavy-duty engine cooling system, and a performance go package consisting of a heavy-duty suspension setup. Ours, by the way, was standard. Also, power disc brakes and a quick ratio manual steering assembly. Truly, the AMX is a blueprint for fun. It's the kind of a car that lets you blow off the cobwebs of a humdrum workaday world and packs a whole garage full of zest and sparkle into your daily transportation. It's docile enough for your favorite girl to take on shopping trips. But underneath breathes the fire of a checkered flag grabber. So ring the bell, Kazumoto. American Motors.